Hey everybody, so in the next episode we're going to start creating the graphics pipeline for the engine. And this is a really complex structure, so I figured I should make a video explaining all of the stages of the graphics pipeline and what their purpose is before we get started building it. So I'd recommend watching this video fully, since the next few episodes are going to assume that you know the information in it, but if you already know everything about the graphics pipeline and you just want to get right into building it, go ahead, skip the video, go on to the next one. I'd still recommend it, but hey, that's up to you. So. Um, Alexander's tutorial that I've been referencing a lot has a lot of really helpful, clear information about how a graph graphics pipeline is structured, so I'm going to be using some of his diagrams along with a decent amount of the information from his site to explain it. As always, I'm encouraging you to check out his tutorial. It's got a lot of really good information, and I'm relying on it pretty heavily, so definitely give it a look. So this diagram right here is right off of his website. It shows the layout of the pipeline. He has a description for each step. Uh, I'm going to restate what he has here and then also add in a little bit of information I've found scattered across the internet. Uh, if you want to see what he's written, feel free to check out his site. Uh, I'm going to put a link to uh, this part of the tutorial in the description for the video. So let's get right into it. I've taken the image right here that he's used and I've gone ahead and put that into a paint program so it's a little bit more visible. There we go. Nope. Right here. Alright. so. The graphics pipeline is a series of stages that the program runs to turn a 3D scene into a 2D representation that gets displayed on your screen. So if you're using a 3D model or just some vertices that you've set up at different positions within the code, then the program would interpret what you've created in terms of vertices into a 2D image and then render that to the pixels of the screen. So right on this image, any of the stages that are in green those are fixed function stages, and that means that the functions in that stage are predefined. You can't change how they behave. Um, any of the orange stages are programmable stages. So in that one, you're writing code for these stages, and that determines how the stage behaves. So let's go through these one by one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that it's more visible. There we go. That's better. So the input to the graphics pipeline is a frame buffer, and that references an image view from one of the swap chain images that we created before. And the pipeline will take in one frame buffer at a time on every render pass. And the information stored in that buffer is passed into the pipeline, which then heads to the input assembler. So this takes all the vertex data from the frame buffer and then outputs uh, what are called vertex data primitives. It's just the information about that vertex. That's taken and sent to the vertex shader right here, which we're going to have to code in the next video. This applies uh, transformations to the vertices to translate them into screen space. So it decides how they would be placed if those were flattened out into a 2D display. Uh, it also processes some of the vertex data that's going to be used later on in the pipeline. All right, next up we have the tessellation shader. This one has to, uh, it'll take patches of vertex data and then subdivide them to give a mesh more detail. Um, we won't be worrying about this for our graphics pipeline. Uh, same is true for the geometry shader. This does something kind of similar to the tessellation shader. Um, it can take a single primitive and then discard it or output any number of additional primitives that are derived from the original one. Uh, again, we won't be worrying about the geometry shader either. Um, next up is rasterization. In this stage, the geometry created by the vertex primitives is broken down into fragments and those are going to be used to display to the screen pixels. Um, this is where clipping would be handled, so fragments that are outside of the screen or that are blocked by other fragments are discarded so that only what would be visible to the camera is being rendered. That gets passed into the fragment shader. This takes the fragments from the rasterization stage, the ones that were not discarded, and uses data from the vertex shader to determine uh, which frame buffer fragments, uh, which frame buffer the fragments should be written to. And it also handles the, the color and depth values of those fragments, and then passes into the color blending stage. This takes the fragments that are written to the same pixel and then puts them together in various ways. So um, it will overwrite one with the other, or it'll figure out ways to combine the colors, um, sometimes using the alpha components so that they blend together. And finally, then it outputs back to a frame buffer, and that is drawn on the screen. It's pretty straightforward. 
So this is just a quick overview of the pipeline. Like I said, I was using a lot of Alexander's tutorial, and then I was also using information from the OpenGL wiki on chronos.org. Um, since I'm not an expert at a graphics pipeline in any way. So I'll include links to both in the description, and if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to leave a comment, and I will do my best to answer them. Next up, we're going to start building the actual graphics pipeline.